as I like to say, if you have a code enforcement issue, you're in the right place. Um, first thing we're going to do is swear everyone in. It'll probably happen once or twice. The strays come in later. Is everyone signed in so they know you're here? So they'll pull your file out. And see, there's a lady right, walking in right now. She'll get sworn in, but we may get to do this again. So everyone, please raise your right hand. Say I do when we're done. Does everyone swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I, I do. All right, everyone knows they're left from their right. That's good. Um, the process here is fairly simple. Most of the hearings we're having today are going to either be violation or fine assessment hearings. In those cases, when you're called, you're going to go over to that podium, identify yourself. The village attorney will walk over and show you some documents that you get to agree or object to. The village will put on his case, you will put on your response, and I get to make a decision. Um, that flips when we get to the fine mitigation hearings. Those people have already been through a violation hearing and a fine assessment hearing. They're asking for relief, so they'll get to go first. I believe that's all I need to say at this present time, other than for the record. I have signed the October and November special hearing magistrate minutes. Okay. Okay. Keep it. Thank you, Sorry. Amity Barnard, Assistant Village Attorney. We're starting on page one of the agenda fine assessment hearings, case 18 1761 106 Sand Pine Way. Mario and Teresa Calderon. Gail McLean, Code Enforcement for the Village of Royal Palm Beach. I'd like to enter into evidence, Exhibit 1, the order finding violation, Exhibit 2, verification of ownership, and Exhibit 3, pictures. All right, you have a signed green card. You have service. Can you state your, your name for the record for me, please? My name is Teresa Calderon. Thank you. These are the exhibits that the village would like to enter into evidence. I'm going to show them to you, and then I'm going to ask you at the end if you have any objection. Exhibit one is the order finding violation with the signed green card. Exhibit two is proof of ownership. Exhibit three, we'll turn this sideways. Photographs of the violations. Oh no, it's what yours. And this is this was part of exhibit one. This is the notice of hearing <coughs> and the notice of violation from the previous. Yes. Yeah, put the sign green card with your signature. Oh, I can't see all those pages. Hmm? Additional photographs. Do you have any objection to these documents? No. Okay, thank you, ma'am. All right, admitted without objection, so. Those, um, the cars parked in my driveway. Yeah, well, they get to go first for a second. All right, Village, what do you have here? We have one or two cars we're talking about. Okay, the wrecked vehicle is new to the scene. It was in an accident. Um, however, the emergency vehicle with the expired tag has been there the whole time of the violation. Okay, so the police interceptor car is got a bad tag? Yes. Okay, and the other one's just whacked in the back all right ma'am now your turn um they say that you have a black car that has no tag or the tag on it's out of date and the white car is obviously disabled my, because of the accident yeah it was my grandson's car he which got, one the white one or the black one the white one okay he got hit from the back okay so and no, the, the, white, the white one is new to the scene however the black she, one is what yeah, you're talking the about? Yeah, ongoing, yes. This is fine assessment. So the black car is what was what found in violation about. previously. So that's been out of compliance for a total of 13 days. So we're here for fine assessment mm. on that car. Okay. Um, if you put the car in the garage, it'll stop the fines. My, my son moved to my house, and he took all his belongings, and he put it in the garage. 
So I can't put a car in the garage. Well, then he or needs to get uh, rid of it. Then he needs to put a tag on the this one. I explained all that to her today, and previously I have explained it to her that she has to remedy the situation one way or the other. Yeah, you just can't let this keep going just because your son moved back in. Well, it's just when I talk to him, he's got the beginnings of Alzheimer's dementia, and my husband too, and I'm taking care of both children. Uh, understood, uh, but you just need to get a tag on the car. I'll, okay. I'll do that myself then. Yeah, you need to do that, and then you can come back for a fine reduction, but... You know, you just can't sit there with the cars sitting there in the driveway just saying they're in the driveway. The village has rules that say these things need to be licensed and insured and operable. And one of them obviously is not licensed and insured because you don't have the tag on it. All right, so it's 13 days at $25. Correct. It's 325, 325 plus continue. continuing. Yes, sir. All right, and you know, at this point there's nothing I can do but enter a fine because there's still a car there that hasn't been tagged. You need to get that thing tagged. And this goes to everyone in the room. You can go off tomorrow and stand in line for hours at the tag place and get it done, but it doesn't count until you call code enforcement and have them come by and look at it because you want an affidavit of compliance in your file, which will stop the fine. So as soon as you get that car tagged, call them so they will come out and stop your fine. Okay? Okay. All right, 325 plus continuing is granted. Thank you. Moving now to page two, repeat violation hearings, case 18-2020-113 Valencia Street, Terencio Julius and Wilda M. Patterson. The code section is 2318B3. The violation is parking on the lawn. This is a repeat violation. I observed this violation on 12-7-18, mailed the notice of violation, notice of hearing certified, and posted them on the property. I'd like to enter into evidence, Exhibit 1, notice of violation, notice of hearing, and affidavit of service. Exhibit 2, order finding violation. Exhibit 3, verification of ownership. Exhibit 4, pictures. Exhibit 5, affidavit of compliance. Okay. All right. So you have service via posting. You can proceed. Well, that patterns. Thank you, ma'am. These are the exhibits that the village would like to enter into evidence. Exhibit one is the affidavit of service for the notice of repeat violation. The notice is attached. <coughs> Exhibit two is the previous order finding violation. Page two of the order. Exhibit three is proof of ownership from property appraiser website. Which vehicle we're talking about? Exhibit four is photographs of the violation. But which one we're talking? Which which one of the vehicles we're talking that was in violation? We're talking about the one on the lawn, right? The car on the lawn. Right on the lawn. Yes. So the one all the way on the right here. It's just from another view. Same um, spot. The thing is, these are not. My vehicle. We'll, we'll get there. We, mm -hmm. You can talk to the magistrate. We'll get there. And then Exhibit 5 is the Affidavit of Compliance. Do you have any objection to just the documents? No. Okay. All right, admitted without objection. So I see there's a, what is that a Chevy? I don't know, some sort of little sedan there, one spot, and then you have a silver SUV at a different time. They park various vehicles there, but they're always parked there. And I've spoken to her husband many, many times. Okay. Now, how many days are you asking for a fine in this case? This was out of compliance. It came into compliance on January 8th, so it was out for 33 days at $50 a day. So we're asking for a fine of $1,650 and not continuing. Hi, Ms. Patterson. Um, I see pictures of cars parked in that one spot. It seems you have more cars than you have spots. So you either have to get that changed well, into a driveway 
Well, to or, begin with, the vehicle is not there anymore. And that's why you have an affidavit of compliance, and that's why they're only asking for 33 days of fines, or they'd be asking for more, and then you get a continuing fine. I don't understand what you're saying, to be honest, about continues and... Anytime you're parked on the lawn, you're in violation, and you park on the lawn all the time. So that's why we're here. Now, if you park the car in the swale in the direction of traffic, that wouldn't be a violation. Correct. But if you're going to park it right up there like you think that's a parking spot, well, it's going to cost you 50 bucks a day. Well, the thing is, it's not my husband and myself that doing this. And it's very difficult to control everyone who's coming in and out. Is it your house, ma'am? Parking there. It is our home. It's your job then to so control then your home. We, we understand that and we have taken steps. I know. Well, you've, had, you've gotten him to move it, but I can tell you it is she's going to drive by again and she's going to see that and then I, you're going to come back for another repeat violation and it just makes no sense to me oh, because 33 times 50 is how much? 1650. 1650 bucks. 20 years ago, that'd be enough to pour a driveway. Nowadays, probably wouldn't even get you four or five feet of it. Yes, $50 a day. You did it for 33 days. You sit there with your mouth open, but there's pictures of cars sitting there, multiple different cars. But I did call when the vehicle was moved. And, and no they stopped the there. fines at that time on January 8th. But you got to stop parking cars there or you're just going to keep coming back. And, you know... If you want to look at pouring a driveway, that'd be a wonderful solution because that would take care of it. But if you're not, you can't park there on the lawn. All right, 33 days at $50 a day, $1,650, no continuing granted. Thank you. Staying on the same page, moving to the violation hearings, case 18-1789102, Prestige Drive, Tavares N. Merrick. Code section is 2657 and 124C. Place that was done without a permit and garbage can is not screened from view. I observed this violation on 10 12 18. Mail the notice of violation, notice of hearing certified, and post them on the property. I'd like to enter into evidence Exhibit 1, notice of violation, notice of hearing, and affidavit of service. Exhibit 2, verification of ownership, and Exhibit 3, pictures. Okay. You have service via posting. You can proceed. Me, please. Tavares and Margaret. Thank you. These are the exhibits that the village would like to enter into evidence. Exhibit one is the affidavit of service for the notice of hearing and the notice of violation. Exhibit two is proof of ownership. Exhibit three is photographs of the violation. Do you have any objection to these documents? No. Thank you. All right, admitted without objection. So we've got a place set in the backyard and because you were there anyway, we had the garbage can in the front. Correct. Okay. All right, so you have an unpermitted playset. I built one myself at my house. I live on La Mancha, but mine's freaking huge, so I permitted it because it's like 13 feet tall and there's no way you can drive by there and not see it. So, and there are certain regulations in the village about where you can put these things. They can't be in side yards or side setbacks, et cetera, et cetera. So you have a choice of permitting it or removing it. By but when I spoke to my HOA, uh, my homeowners association, they say I didn't need a permit for that, that I was in, um, was in it, COVID. You did not need a permit from the HOA. And he came out and he spoke to me and he said, no, that was not something that they had in the bylaws that for a you swing. You not need it from the HOA, but you need it from the village. How would I know I need it from the village if my HOA, would, I mean, when I looked at my um, bylaws, it didn't require that. And when I call her to Have ask you her, ever heard of the, the, the phrase ignorance of the law is no excuse? No. Okay. There's an old phrase out there that says ignorance of the law is no excuse. There's a set of documents out here called the Municipal Code of the Village of Royal Palm Beach. It's online at municode.com. And that's the same response that I got when I called her. She told me to look it up. Right. So and I, I can tell you, like I said, I permitted my playhouse at my house. How long ago, sir? Because I, permit, I permitted that playhouse 
Ooh, my kid was about four. She's 19, 15 years ago. And I had it permitted. I had to locate it on a map showing it was not in setbacks. I had to have straps and hurricane straps attached everywhere. And I had to have it inspected by the village. And that's the same thing we were asking because I was asking her that I didn't have to have a blueprint or anything. It doesn't change the value of my house. So why do I have to have a permit for something on part of the property? It is called a structure. And this structure will blow around in a hurricane. And that's why the village has permits for structures like play sets and like sheds. Now, if your HOA doesn't allow or does it or allows it, you're one step closer, but that does not excuse you from getting a permit from the village. So you need to go get it permitted. What time does she have to get it permitted? We'd be asking for compliance by 228 or the 313 fine assessment hearing or a fine of $25 a day. So they're saying you need to get this thing either permitted or removed by February 28th. So it doesn't matter the texture of the item that I have because she- Not at all. Well, okay. she told me it did. If it was metal, it wouldn't be a problem. I told you if it was a metal swing set, not this kind of a structure. This is a play oh, structure. It's not a swing set. Permits. There's a difference according to their code. Mm -hmm. So I got mine permitted. You can get yours is a pre-made playhouse. All of them are pre-made. No, I spent $1,500, bought four by fours, poured concrete, screwed screwed things together. That thing made it through three hurricanes. It has tiles but that matched my roof. That, sir, I'm not arguing, but that's something there. that you built. That's not something that I built. That was something that was purchased. I know, and Does because, it change the because value it of was my purchased, house? Because it was purchased, it means it probably has engineering drawings, which you're gonna need. Does it affect the value of the house? The problem you're thinking right now is this is not a tax collector deal right now. This is code enforcement. If it affected the value of your house, you talk to the tax assessor or the tax collector. But you're not following the village rules which say this needs to be permitted. If but you that's don't a want temporary to structure. It, it's not a temporary structure, it's a structure. Oh wow. So you either have to move it or permit it. Permitting's no big deal if you want to go through the process. You have On private the, property? On private property, correct. I got mine permitted on private property. If you, you want work a fence, for the code, you know the codes. That's the thing. It's not ignorance of the law, but if you work, if you are aware of the codes, you are. Well, you are now to do. aware of the codes. You have until February 28th to either permit or remove the structure, or you will appear at the March 13th code enforcement hearing and be assessed a $25 a day fine. We're done. Yeah, I see that. Yeah, I've tried helping educate you, but you don't. No, you didn't. You did invited. Okay. Next. Moving to page three, case 18 1944 923 Orchid Drive, Jose A. Lido and Leandra J. Torres. Code section is 2657 and 6190A, canopy without a per permit and drive and sidewalk are stained. I observed this violation on 11918, now the notice of violation, notice of hearing certified, and got the green card back signed but not dated. I'd like to enter into evidence, Exhibit 1, notice of violation, notice of hearing, Exhibit 2, verification of ownership, and Exhibit 3, picture. <clears throat> All right, you're going to have to help illuminate me with the picture because... Yeah, it was hard to get a good angle on it. Okay, are we looking at the property to the left or the property directly? Property to the left. All right, and that is the peak yes. beyond the white wall there on the left left hand structure. Yeah, that's a trailer. Okay. Got it. All right, you have service via signed green card, you can proceed. Can you state your name for the record, sir? Yeah, Jose Lido. Thank you. These are the exhibits that the village would like to enter into evidence. Exhibit one is the notice of hearing. Violation. Yes, the side wall is already clean, and uh, I'm waiting for the permit we'll for. We'll get there. Hold on one second. We got to get through these documents. We'll get there. Okay. And the signed green card. Exhibit two is at the back here. It's proof of ownership from the property appraiser website. And exhibit three is photographs of the violation. All right. I don't have idea. I need permit for the canopy. Okay, we'll get there. Hold on one second, mm -hmm. and then this is a photo of the side. <clears throat> what, what, this one? Mm -hmm. Yes, it's already, it's already clean. Yep, we'll get there. Do you have any objection to just the documents? Yes, 
How about what? Do you, ha do you have any objection to these documents? No. All right, admit it without objection. Now, just. He has, a, he has applied for a permit. Okay. So it, it, you should be able to resolve that by the end of February, we'd hope? Yes. So this is the same 228 And he's in compliance with the drive and sidewalk, which is okay. 6198. So that's just going to be a finding effect on that. Correct. And then compliance for and the other the section. Canopy without a permit is 228313. For $25 a day. Fine. 25. Got to tell you, you can't blame me for the, the laws of the village. I just, I just enforce them. The village has decided that canopies need to be permitted too because I guess they can fly in hurricanes. So. There, there's certain standards that you have to go through. I don't even know what they are, but probably involves making sure that they're securely fastened to something so they don't go around. And once again, they can't be in the wrong spots, but yours probably, I don't know, I can't tell. Is, is that behind? It's behind the house, so I wouldn't think it's in any It's probably kind of a not setback. in a setback. I was just trying to think if it's behind the house or the trailer. You can't have it on the side, but where it seems that yours is, if it's behind the house, Yes. It should be permittable, just as long as you go through whatever they need to, to see. Well, I don't even know what. And the, he already has the paperwork. He has so. the paperwork. He just needs to get it filled out, it just turned back in. No, it just hasn't, hasn't been paper. issued yet. Oh, okay. So he's yeah, turned everything process. in. Yes. Okay. So, you have until February twenty eighth to do that. Um, if anything comes up, just remind me that you had submitted your permit before you even showed up here. I'll give you more time. Okay, I went in for the permit. I yeah, have... once you have the permit, you're good. Okay. And then the other thing is just, you know, it's like the lady with the, you know, the, the prior problem and she had a trash can. You know, your sidewalk was kind yeah, of like about a trash the can. Yeah, about the sidewalk. They've side... already said you fixed it, so yeah, it's all about good. about the sidewalk is already the, it's have a stain. Yeah, I well. Do, I do a lot of brush or cleaner, but. No, it's... no, they've said it's, they said it's as good as you can get it and it's good enough for them. So yeah. your sidewalk is and done. The, and that sidewalk. It's already dirty for seven months, but I walk, I walk my dog for seven months and never watch him. Yeah, well, I seen to buy the house. Yeah, well, the problem is right now it's the dry season. Yes. Best time to clean because during the yeah. wet season, it just molds. Oh, it's okay. So, you know, you have to let it go during the wet season, and then once it cleans up, I'm going to have to fire up my pressure cleaner and do my fence. I hate that. But, you know, it's the only time of year you can do this crap. So, okay. Thank you. You'll get an order in the mail from me. Thank you, sir. Next is 18-1946, 834 Azalea Drive, Matthew J. Nelson and Joshua Vargas. Code sections are 6191 and 2657, shed st structure in setback without a permit. I'm sorry, in disrepair without a permit. I observed this violation on 11-918, got the green card back signed but not dated. Like to enter into evidence, Exhibit 1, notice of violation, notice of hearing, Exhibit 2, verification of ownership, Exhibit 3, picture, and ex Exhibit 4, survey showing that the only structure that was permitted in that location was a fence. Okay. Let's... Wood privacy fence, is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. A little out of order, but it's all there. Okay. Uh, sign green card equals service. You can proceed. Sir, you are? Uh, yes, my name is Matthew Nelson. All right, Mr. Nelson. Sir, these are the exhibits that the village would like to enter into evidence. Exhibit one is a notice of hearing, mm -hmm. notice of violation, and the signed green card. Okay. Out of order. Exhibit two is proof of ownership from the property appraiser website. Okay. Exhibit three, photographs Got of it. violation. Mm-hmm. And then exhibit four is a survey showing that a, only a fence. Okay, I see it. Yep. Do you have any objection to these documents? No. Thank you, sir. Okay. So they're saying that you have a shed slash structure in disrepair and it's not permitted, uh, which is highly normal for the world. There are like two people I know in this county that would actually check the records of the municipality to see what's wrong with it, and that's my former partner and myself. <laughs> Because we're lawyers and we do real estate-ish kind of stuff. Okay. okay. So, um, uh, yeah, I, I am aware of the, the the shed of obviously being in disrepair. Um, I wasn't aware until obviously a violation that it was unpermitted. Um, I do have a survey of before I purchased the property. I purchased the property in September September 26th of 2017, 
And I have a survey that was taken on September 1st, 2017, showing that the shed is there. So I didn't put the shed there. It was there when I purchased yeah, the property. Yeah, unfortunately, you bought a problem. So the unpermitted shed. Exactly. And I understand that, that I'll, I'll, I'm going to have to take care of this. And, you know, I've been here multiple times on various things with the roof needing to be replaced, which I did, oh. the sidewalk, blah, 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 all this stuff. So I, I know it needs to get done. And um, I just wanted to make sure I showed up today so I get enough time to get it done properly. That's why we were looking at probably at the end of February to see if you want to either permit it. Now, where is it located? Is it in back of the house? I have a copy of the uh, survey with the location if you want to see Come it. Come on up here for a sec. I just want to see if it's permittable, just so it's I not in the wrong think. spot. Okay. And Depending on so it gets it what he has. Yeah. Go back so you're on the record, and then I'll bring you the paper back. Thank you, sir. Okay. Yeah. It's over 26 feet from the rear property line. And it's, uh, that says it's 20.88 feet, but it's probably over 10 feet from there. You may. I don't know. You'll have to go check out with zoning. The good news is you have a survey that shows exactly where this thing is. Mm -hmm. So most people have to actually update their survey to do it and spend the money. So you can just say, here, here's exactly where it is and see if it's permittable. Okay. So you need to sit down with them to make sure. I mean, the back line looks fine because mm -hmm. I think there's a 26 foot call. Okay. Which is a direct, but the, uh, the side one is like 20 something feet, but that's to the side of your building. Okay. It's not to the side of the shed. They have these things called scales, just rulers that they'll switch over to one sure inch equals in 50 place. feet, one inch equals 100, that, and they'll measure it off for and see if it's permittable. Then you can just get it permitted. Okay. Do, if, do, I, do I need, um, like, it's, it's already built. Would I have to provide blueprints to get a permit on some, an existing structure? It depends. Structure? I mean, if it's, uh, I just use the Ted Sheds as an example. Okay. Most of those things have engineering drawings on file that you just write to the company, they build, send it to you. Shed. This was definitely a custom made, you know, four by fours and four by sixes on concrete footers kind of, you, it's you not something prepackaged or prefabricated or anything like that. Yeah, you might have to go through the building department to see if that's acceptable. Um, you have to bring uh, in pictures of what structure is there so they can look at it and see if it is. Yeah, back okay. when I did my shed, no one cared about the wind load. Okay. I mean, it, it made it through three hurricanes, so it obviously worked. But, you know, I don't know how picky they are on that. Most things, they like to have the engineering, but normally it's just accessible. But if you have a custom structure, you know, it may take a little longer. So Okay. Um, it, now, I, I know in, in addition to needing the permit, it needs some repair as well. So I wanted to see if I can get an extra cycle. I don't know when the next meeting is instead of February. Yeah, once you get the permit... You have six months to fix okay. it to to a the position where it's permit. going to get a sign off on a final inspection. Okay. So that gives you time to repair it. Got it. I like your little ninja throwing thing there. Oh, I yeah. bought, bought my ninjas. daughters who are 15 and 19 throwing knives for Christmas. <laughs> First thing they played with, they grabbed the knives and started throwing it at our playhouse. <laughs> it's good to have a wood. Well, play. it's a good thing you have a nice solid wood playhouse. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Uh, 228, 313, okay, so 25. We're going to give a little bit we're more We're going to give them another month? Yeah. Okay. So we, if we could ask for compliance. Um, by three something and then Yeah, by four. 329 or the 410 hearing. All right. They've given you an extra month. Thank you. Don't procrastinate on it. Get it submitted. At least, you know, if you come back and say, I turned it in, you know, five days after the hearing and then they sat on it, it's not your problem, it's theirs. Got and it. then just pursue it. As long as you're working on it, we'll work with you. Okay. And Thank special you. magistrate, a fine of $25 a day uh, if it's three, not yeah. complied. Yeah, 329, 410, 25 granted. Okay. Thank you, sir. Great. Thank you. Next. Top of page 4, 18 11806, Dahlia Drive, Manuel Dominguez. The code section is 2318B1, prohibited vehicle. I observed this violation on 11-16-18, mailed the notice of violation, notice of hearing certified, and got the green card back signed but not dated. Like to enter into evidence, Exhibit 1, notice of violation, notice of hearing, Exhibit 2, verification of ownership, and Exhibit 3, picture. Okay. Terrible lighting, by the way. Um, signed green card equals service. You can proceed. Byron Thomas. 
in your relation to the property? Um, it's my follow up property. Okay. These are the exhibits that the village would like to enter into evidence. Exhibit one is notice of hearing, notice of violation, and the signed green card. Exhibit two is proof of ownership. And exhibit three is a photograph of the violation. Do you have any objection to these documents? No. Thank you, sir. All right. The problem with your vehicle is you have stuff in the truck bed, right? Am I correct right. with that? Yes. That's the water, whatever that is, the right. tank. Right, the water for... tank, right. And I, he and I have discussed this numerous times. Hey, we're on TV, though, so I get to go say, like, five words. <laughs> if, if you put something on there like a solid topper, you're good. Okay, I, I, I came up, I spoke with Rob today, too, as well, trying to get an idea of what I can do. Um, what I was telling Gail, like, I go to work um, 4 day in the morning. And when I come back, you know, um, I, when I come back to the house, I wasn't aware because I, I misunderstood what she said. I was taking it off at night, like she um, asked me to do. But when I spoke with her again, she said, you can't have it at your property um, during the day for more than an hour. So that's what I was. Um, yeah, the, well, the problem is the it. word prohibited. And it wouldn't be prohibited if it were just a truck. The right. problem is the tank in the back of the truck. And you can fix that by getting a solid topper, Correct. putting it on top of it, and then you're good. I know. But I or, or the other solution is to remove everything from the back, and you're good. Or another solution is to park it somewhere else because right. it violates the village code. Now, here, here's something. I used to get all these people in here that were being cited because they had ladders on the top of their vehicles. Right. Okay. And I said for months, you know, you can say whatever you want to me, but I can't change the law. It's the village council that needs to change the law. Well, someone actually took my advice. They went to the village council and now they're allowed. So you can now have a ladder on top of your air conditioning or whatever truck, and you don't have to take it down at night and do all the silly things. You can try to change the law to allow these things to be in truck beds, but the simpler solution is e either remove it or put a topper on it. Okay. And if you can throw a topper on it and still get to it, and you know, you may want to cut a hole in the top of the topper. I don't know what you want to do to get to your tank, but if you can <laughs> enclose it, and I'm not talking about throwing a tarp over it because that won't count. Right, she explained that to me. So if um, you can do that, that's fine. If you can't, well, you need to deal with it some other way. And I'm going to give you till the end of February to do that. That's that's correct. 228. So, or so you have until 228. And if you remove it from the property, that's fine. Call them. If you fix it by putting a topper on, call them. Whatever you do, call them just so, you know. Mm. But otherwise, your only other solution is to get them to change the law. And that takes a while. Okay. Just saying. Yeah. But it. All right, I didn't see Gail today. I was looking for her as I can do, but I did spoke with um, Rob um, today. He was saying they had another um, gentleman had that side of that same situation, okay. and he was able to um, put like um, some white plates up on the side, as long as the tank is not showing. Yeah, uh, it's just you're screening solution. it, but yeah, just screen it from. Uh, yeah, but it's like so a topper is a much easier way. I don't know if it fit, but you know it's just all done. And if you want to build one yourself, have fun. I, I take cars apart and put them back together. That's what I do for therapy. Yeah. Well, uh, I didn't want to put it back. I change trucks a lot, so. Uh, okay. Well, then you. But the I, problem with that is you can't fit it in the rails if you keep changing trucks. But that's up to you. Okay. Well, I'll right. take care. You'll get an uh, order saying you need to fix this by the end of February. You'll see me in March. All right. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Next. 18-1896-153 <clears throat> Sparrow Drive, Rick 25 LTD. Margaret Hancock, Code Enforcement Inspector for the Village of Royal Palm Beach. Code Sections 2657 2318B. I observed this violation on 103018. Mail out a notice violation notice of hearing on 103018. They signed for it on 11618. Like to enter those following documents into evidence. Exhibit 1, Bless. notice violation notice of hearing. Bless you. Exhibit 2, verification ownership. Exhibit 3, pictures. Exhibit 4, AS400 permit information. Shane Munson with MDC on behalf of the owner and the contractor. Oh, one sec. I'm just getting there. Okay. Um, you have a signed green card. Sir, your name again? 
Shane Munson with MDC on the M-U-N-S-O-N? That's correct. On behalf of the owner and the contractor. Okay, Shane. All right, Representative. Sir, do you have anything with you authorizing you to speak on behalf of the owner? I have nothing with me at this time. M-S-O-N. And what is your company, MDC? What does that stand for? Munson Design and Consulting. The owner is in California. Okay. I'll let him talk. I can produce something post with. No, that's fine. I'm just going to let you talk. It's it's all good. They just don't want stray people coming in and doing stuff. I understand with out-of-state owners, someone's got to show up. These are the exhibits that the village would like to enter into evidence. Exhibit one is a notice of hearing, notice of violation, yes. and a signed green card. Who signed the card? The owner? Uh, somebody from where this was sent to. Yes. Okay, my guess signature. Exhibit two is proof of ownership from the property appraiser website. Exhibit three is photographs of the violation. Just a second view. Oh. And then exhibit four is the village's ISO 400 permit information showing that no permit has been pulled or applied for. Do you have any objection to these documents? No. Thank you, sir. Okay. Little something or others. Try a mental block there. What's the daycare? Le Not petite. petite. Not petite. I had a kid in there for a couple of years. I know your parking lot very well. It also doesn't help that it's like right across the field from the village hall. <laughs> so you're like right there in their face. Um, all right, so I take the canopy without a permit as a blue canopy on the playground. It's actually the, the green one on the okay. right. Okay, the green one on the right. Yes. Which no one ever goes in and files an amendment to their site plan like they should because I don't want to spend the money. And then the parking on the front lawn part is That's just actually a finding of fact. They stopped doing that. that, that they stopped now. doing that. I would have done that just for the shade. All right, so they're they're good on the the parking. The guy whoever's doing it has stopped parking under the the grass. Um, but you need to go in and I guess modify the site plan to allow for the the canopy. The very first thing we're doing is applying for a permit. We thought we would have it in before today. There was a little issue, so we do suspect that we'll have applied for the permit this week. All right, but I'm telling you, it's one thing to apply for a permit on a single-family residential. You know, you saw the guy earlier with pretty much the same thing, except he doesn't have a site plan requirement for his property. True. You probably do have a site plan, so hopefully they will we're issue hoping. your permit or they will consider it a minor amendment to the site plan otherwise you have to go through a process true and we've taken the steps of producing the survey we're going to apply for the permit hopefully this week and then we'll get some feedback i think as to which direction we have to go if we... yeah okay so we'll go up there so we're are we looking at 228 here or are we looking at more or they're busy give them a second to finish their conversation and they'll talk to me Did you happen to say that the uh, parking on the grass was corrected and that's not an issue anymore? It's going to be called a finding of fact, but oh, it, which will... Yeah, we actually need to pull that code section. But yeah, they stopped parking there. Okay. So we're going to remove some of the ATV from... Just going to remove it completely? Yes, sir. And so it's not even a finding of fact, it's just not a violation yeah. at all? Correct. Okay, so I just draw lines through all that. And then for 2657, we're going to ask for compliance by 228 or the 313 fine hearing or 25 dollars all right, um, keep in contact with code enforcement because if you're required to go through a site plan process, it's going to take more time. That's right. If it's just a permit, just locate it, engineer it. I mean, you know, you want to be safe. There are little kids running around. Mine used to run around that lot too. For what it's worth, the subcontractor was not who we thought he was. So yeah. We, we are trying. Okay, great. Um, just keep at it. I'll sign that order. Thank you. And my date for? 228-313. So 228 is the cutoff date for the permit being issued. And if it's not, you're going to come back here on 313 and explain to me why. And the why will probably be they made us go through site plan review. 
Otherwise, it should just be done unless they require some engineering. You have to fill that in. Understood. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Munson. Have a good day. Next. Thanks, Moving now to page six. Well, we skip five completely. Case 18-2049, 11491, Blue Violet Lane, Leo G. Um, yeah, 1322 General. Sorry, bottom of page five, I skipped one. Ah, okay, well, we didn't go completely. Bottom of page five. 18 Denlow Lane, Thomas P. and Ellen S. Flynn, starting here. Code section 622-108.4, the stucco at the gable ends without a permit. I observe this violation on 11-29-18, sent out notice of violation, notice of hearing on 11-30-18, and posted it to the property. I'd like to enter those following documents into evidence. Exhibit one, notice of violation, notice of hearing, affidavit of service. Exhibit two, verification of ownership. Exhibit three, pictures. Exhibit four, AS400 permit information. All right, you have affidavit of service, so you have service and you can proceed. Sir, your name? Thomas Flynn. All right, Mr. Flynn. These are the exhibits that the village would like to enter into evidence. Exhibit one is the affidavit of service. Yes, ma'am. Notice of hearing and the notice of violation. Exhibit two is proof of ownership. Yep. Exhibit three, photographs. Good picture. One photograph of the violation, and exhibit four is the village's ISO 400 permit information. Do you have any objection to these documents? None whatsoever. Thank you, sir. All right, well, the good news is you haven't painted it so they can really inspect the crap out of it. <laughs> yeah, you just, some of the things they ask you to permit are kind of on the edge. Stucco is kind of on the edge. I, I was at a, at a loss. I was. I was like, I just sanded my T111 all clean and pretty and painted it again, but I can understand the want of putting lath and stucco on there, a much better looking product, but got to get a permit. Well, I'll explain a couple obstacles after. I think they're pretty much done with theirs because we see you. The have obstacle a... is we went in to get a permit, and then because it's a rental property, I can't permit it. And uh, the work's already done. I've contacted several general contractors and they're kind of like, the work's done? I'm having a tough time getting them out. I feel that the work was, is, uh, looks great. You see the picture? It's, uh, it was waterproofed. It had the lath put on it, a couple coats of stucco. It's very professional. Compared to some of the other houses up and down the block, it's very nice. Uh, the house is well maintained. When I was notified to uh, clean my sidewalk and et cetera, I had it immediately completed. I tried to sir. get the permit, but right now uh, I'm at a wit's end because general contractors won't come out to do something that they're not going to work on. Yeah, you're going to have to pay some stucco guy to just to permit it. Yeah. Um, I'm going to give him a little Who more did time. The work? I'm sorry. Who did it? I mean, is there? I hired a couple guys. I, I hired them? a couple guys to do it. I watched the work. I saw what they did. They put the uh, the tie back up. They put on the lath with a the tar paper on the back. Right. I mean, they did two coats and of stuff. They're stucco. not licensed. They're just two guys. Yeah. Yeah. See, it's I mean, I didn't really think that. I mean, this looked to bear. <clears throat> yeah, you just you cosmetics. don't know. You don't know what from municipality to municipality requires yeah. what, and you've just learned the stucco requires a permit. What's the three dates we had? The three. Three twenty-nine or the four ten fine hearing or twenty-five dollar day. Three twenty-nine, four ten. I'm giving you an extra month basically to go find somebody to try to permit this for you all you really need to do is get them a contractor it doesn't need to be a gc okay i went to gc's that's where i was going they're, they're they don't care you just find some stucco company say look you know if i flip you how much for you to file a permit i've got a problem with the village and that's what you just need to do they pull the permit if you were an owner you just do it owner builder no one would care but since it's a rental you can't do it because it's not homestead property okay Okay, so 329, 410, 25, it gives you about two months to find somebody. The work's done. All right, and if I get a permit, all I do is contact the office and it's over? It's yes, all please. done. Once, once you get a permit, you know, they give you six months to finish it. You're already done. Um, my one suggestion would be I probably wouldn't paint it until you get DCO. Well, that's uh, my next step is, you know, have it primed and painted. I mean... I, I would almost... I might not be here. I, I don't know. Uh, yeah, the, the problem with that is it probably is easier for them to inspect it when it's not primed and painted, especially if they need to scratch through to find, you know, the, because you don't have, unless you have pictures of the progress uh, along the way, they, they will probably 
scratch out an area, just make sure that there's lath there underneath it, and there's, and you'll have to have that repaired. Okay, well, that's... But that's, that's not huge. Just something they may have to do. It's like someone who does electrical, and they, you know, put the drywall up. Well, to do the electrical inspection, you might have to open the drywall up a little. So. All right. Thank All right, 329, 410, 25, granted. All right. Page six. Now to page six. 18-2049-11491 Blue Violet Lane. Oops, I'm sorry. 18-2049-11491 Blue Violet Lane. Leo G. Pengelinen and Catherine P. Directo. The code section is 15141. The description tree um, was hat racked. This was sent certified mail on 12-19-2018 and it was signed for on 1-3-2019. I would like to enter the following documents into evidence. Exhibit one, notice of violation and notice of hearing. Exhibit two, verification of ownership. And exhibit three, pictures. Okay. <clears throat> no. It's that one. So um, you'll see in the photos that the tree's been removed at this point. He obtained a vegetation removal permit. Okay. And well, he removed the tree. And so. That's not a hat rack he has anymore. Yep. So he just has to uh, uh, replace it, but he has six months with his permit. Okay. So you have a signed green card. You have service. We've pretty much done your whole case, but she has to show you papers or we can't move on. Uh, my name is Leo Fangelina. Thank you. Mm -hmm. These are the exhibits at the Village Elect Entrance Evidence. Exhibit mm -hmm. one, notice of hearing, notice of violation, and the signed green card. Mm -hmm. Exhibit two, proof of ownership, two copies of that, same thing. And exhibit three photographs of the violation. Do you have any objection to these documents? No. Thank you. All right. Admitted without objection. So how do I even do this? Do we just say 228 for fun? And he's already got the permit, right? No, it would be a finding of fact that finding he had fact that the he has got the permit. The tree during, was hat racked, but, um, but it's, those were to tell you that he was in compliance. He okay. obtained the vegetation removal permit. Up. Finding yes. of fact is granted. Which means no fine. Oh, thank you. No nothing. You did it. You did what you were supposed uh, to do was, before. You just have to come back and put put another acceptable tree down. The permit just wasn't um, issued before Friday. I think it yes. got issued Friday afternoon. Friday afternoon, and after or she did wouldn't even have to be here, right? Yep. Oh, well. I applied the Thursday. permit since October when when they cited me for the violations. After four days, I applied for the permit, but well, just something you know, happened. So. Sometimes um, they get a lot of permits yes, in, and then you and hit the holidays, I and everything stops. <laughs> didn't have stopped. replacement on there, and that's uh, the problem. Yeah, okay. there's a keyword that I have that I should have put in there that remove and replace. I just put in remove. Remove, not so in replace. So that's why they didn't approve the permit. Okay, well then you'll replace and you'll be fine. You've got six months to get an okay. acceptable foliage. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next, Next fine mitigations. Next, fine mitigations. Yes, uh, case zero nine one eight one. 127 Finch Court, Donna K. Smith, and Harry C. Gray. I'd like to enter the following documents into evidence. Exhibit one, letter request and fine mitigation. Exhibit two, previous order assessing fine. Exhibit three, affidavit of compliance. Exhibit four, verification ownership. <coughs> Wow, I didn't even sign this. That's that old. Hmm. All right. And Special yeah. Magistrate, there are, there are three cases. Would you like me to call them together, or would you like to hear them separately? It's all up to you. I see we have three separate ones. Why don't we just deal with them separately? We'd, okay. we'd appreciate them consolidated. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So we're going to do with 09181 first, since that's one? Uh, yes. Do you need to call them all out, or does it matter? We're going to do 09181 first, find out how much it is, and find out why I should reduce it. We'll do them it. separate, if, if that's okay. As far as our presentation, it's going to be kind of joint together. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It just It's easier for me if I have a, an amount and then a reduction, an amount and a reduction. Otherwise, I have to have a global amount. I have to reduce it. I have to split it apart. It's just easier to do one at a time. So let's do one at a time. Okay. Can you state your name, sir, the record, please? Uh, my name is Brian McLaughlin. And I'm an attorney here helping out representing the Grays. Can you spell your last name? McLaughlin is M C L A U G H L I N. Just like I spelled it. And Mr. and Mrs. Gray are here as well. Okay. 
All right, so I would assume this is an 09 nine year fine. I bet yes, it's sir, a great the, big number. The fine amount is 86,800. And the village's costs are $12,854.86. Can, can you say that number again? $12,854.86. Why should it be reduced? Okay, can we get all of them out? I'm just going to kind of go through. We need to do three separate orders. So We need to do three separate orders. Just give your speech. We'll just tell me again for the second one and the third one, but go ahead. Okay, and, and they're all kind of up, up tied together. But uh, um, essentially what happened is there was two, two orders in 09. 181, which was for, I'll go through them each individually stained driveway restricted trailer parked in the rear and the yard not being screened so that was in february of 09 and then in march of 09 there was a violation for shutters on the windows they didn't take down their their shutters um, items in the rear of the yard and a prohibited vehicle on the property and disabled vehicle similar you know I issues with the backyard um, so th those violations have now accrued he, he got notice of them and fixed them and didn't realize the process to come in and get it. And that's the short end of the story. He got a fence permit, got a fence put up to block the rear yard and took care of all the cars. And since 09, he's been uh, doing the driveway, uh, pressure cleaning the driveway once, twice a year at least. So these violations were corrected shortly thereafter. He did not realize that he had to go to before you guys and before the code enforcement and get these done. He did not have any known notice, or not any notice, he didn't know that there was a lien on his home and that it's been crewing for nine years. He was recently brought into foreclosure and the city, the village was included and that was his first notice of this. Um, then he got a violation and now in March of 18 for a disabled vehicle in the yard, uh, different, completely different, that was taken care of a couple days later and then the sidewalks being, being cleaned, he did that. We've got uh, affidavits of compliance on all three. I, I can put him on the stand, and I was going to essentially give you the evidence that you need to come back. Uh, with us. Um, here's my here's my problem. I mean, you know, the whole point of calling the code inspector down there is the code inspector will file an affidavit and give you a date certain as to when the violation stopped. That way, you know when the fine is is stopped and the amount that has accrued. I'm a trial lawyer. I assume that I you're one too. We I understand, to and that's why we, we have, have to, to deal with matters of proof. What we, proof have, do you I, have other than? I have the fence permit. Okay. Well, and that, I'm going to have his testimony that the issues were cleaned up, and there haven't been recurring violations. These are not repeat violations. See, um, that's you know, that's wonderful hearsay, but well, it'd it's be nice be to have pictures or some other proof that all this stuff was moved at some certain time. Otherwise, I'm just shooting in the dark. I mean, I have pictures of in 2018. And that does nothing to eliminate the time gap from 2009 to 2018. And so, and so that's why we're here on a code reduction. And I was going to explain to you there. there um, I don't know if you want to put his testimony on. I, I think it's all you know, my conjecture here. So I think it's better to come from him from a factual standpoint. Well, you can put his testimony on, but what, what corroboration do I have? That's my problem. And, and I understand. But testimony is you better. turned your mic off by accident over there. Thank you. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, so I'll, I'll put him on the stand. And as we discussed, this is going to go through all, all three of the, of the violations. Okay. I'm what sorry. What, what was the request? They, they want to uh, put their, te their client on the stand and tell us that they fixed this sometime in 09. Okay. That, that's, that's fine. We can call them all to, into the record and then he can. Yeah, the, we can the, divide the, them all three. Okay, that's, that's fine. All right, oh, call them. The next one is 09 529 127 Finch Court, Harry Seagray, and Donna K. Smith. How much is that? Well, now we need evidence in the record. From I the tender the following documents into evidence Exhibit 1, previous order, assessing fine, affidavit of service, Exhibit 2, affidavit of compliance, Exhibit 3, verification of ownership. Okay, what's the amount of this fine? $173,350. And the village's costs are twelve thousand eight hundred and fifty four dollars and eleven cents. 
And then okay, and the last one. 18-0567, 127 Finch Court, Harry C. Gray and Donna K. Smith. I can add following documents and evidence. Exhibit 1, previous order assessing fine. Exhibit 2, affidavit compliance. Exhibit 3, verification ownership. Okay, and how much is that fine? $125. Well, at least one. All right, Mr. McLaughlin. Is, is there any administrative cost with regard to that one? Uh, oh, probably a lot more than amount. 125 bucks. So, I understand. You know, that one doesn't really count much. Go ahead. I'll put Mr. Gray on the stand. Here. <coughs> He's already been sworn in, correct? Correct. Okay, Mr. Gray, um, at your, you, you first give your name. My name's Harry Gray. How long have you and or your wife owned the property at 127 Finch? Since 1987, is that correct? Correct. And you're currently married to Donna Gray? Yes. Okay, and you're understanding that we're here today on the fines 09-181, 09-529, and 18-566. Is correct? Yes. And you've now received affidavits of compliance on all three of those violations, correct? Yes. Okay, you, you're a mechanic by trade? Yes. Okay, do you recall getting the notices of violation of the 209 violations in 2009 regarding your driveway, cars in the backyard, and screening your backyard? Yes. Also regarding the um, panels on your windows? Yes. Okay, did you go about as, me, as fast as you could in correcting those? I did. Did you take care of the cars in your backyard and in the driveways? Yes. Okay, um, did you uh, uh, pressure wash your driveway? Yes. Have you been continually pressure washing your driveway one to two times a year since then? You have to, <laughs> yes. Did you uh, put up a fence that, that uh, gates on either side of your property that, that fence off and screen the backyard of your fence? Yes, I did. Okay, did you apply for that permit in 2009? Yes. Okay, and I'm gonna show you uh, the permit here and ask that this, the application be entered into evidence. Is that the permit application? Yes. 09-0845. Do you need to see this, ma'am? Yes. Well, it's probably your own permit application, so I could assume you have one. Or maybe not, it's from 09. Yes. And in fact, those, those, that fence was put up and the gates put up that now screen the property. Okay. Correct? Oh, sorry. I'm, I'm asking my client, sorry. And those, those fences yes. were put up, put up and, and they now yes. screen the back of the property? Yes. Um, mm -hmm. Did you, was it your understanding that this satisfied the notices? Yes, I was. Okay. Were you aware that liens were placed on your property? No. Okay. Were you aware that it's the village's position that it was your duty to verify the villages with, to acknowledge that you were in compliance? No, I did not. Okay. Were you aware that it's their position that fees have been accruing since 2009? No. Okay. Did you know you needed an affidavit of compliance? Yeah. No. Did you know you needed an affidavit of compliance for them to realize that? No. Okay. No. All right. Um, when did you become aware of this issue of the liens? Is it when you were sued for foreclosure in 2018? Yes. Okay, and your, your house is currently under mortgage foreclosure, correct? Correct. Okay, and that lawsuit noticed the villages because of those liens? Yes. That lawsuit was filed in July of 2018? Yes. Okay. Um, were you aware of the March 18th violation regarding the cars in the driveway and the, the March 18th, 2018 violation mm -hmm. regarding the cars in the driveway and the, the cleaning the driveway? Yes. Okay. Did you immediately go about to fix those? Yes, I did. Okay. Did, did you get an affidavit of compliance on August 1st, 2018 regarding that? And I can show it to yes. you. Yes. Um, and the order in that case um, was entered oh, on August 13th, 2018 after you got the uh, compliance, yeah. correct? Yes. Okay. Um, were you aware that you needed to do anything more after you got that August 1st compliance affidavit? No. Um, is it true that you're currently undergoing financial issues? Very, yes. You're a mechanic, correct? Correct. Okay, and so you lost a prime, one of your prime clients about a year ago, is that correct? Correct. And you have not been able to make up that lost income? No. Since no. then, and is that the reason you're in mortgage foreclosure at this time? Yes, sir. Okay, and uh, final judgment was entered in that foreclosure case in November of 2018? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> yes. It's true that you are now trying to sell the property to get all the equity you can out of your home to be able to move? Yes. Your plan to then try to find 
a rental property or something else that will suit you and your wife, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, have you spoken to potential purchasers or regarding selling your home? Yes. Okay. Are those potential property uh, purchasers conveyed to you that it is not feasible for them to buy the property with the amount of code liens currently on it? Yes, that's okay. correct. Currently, you own your property in mortgages and fees about $150,000? Correct. Okay. And does your property need renovations on the interior? To make uh, it, does your property need renovations on the interior? Oh, yeah, to make definitely. It? Yes. Okay. All right. In your, in your opinion, is your property worth around $200,000 in its current condition? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So essentially, with the mortgage and the other costs, without any code liens, you could at the most be looking at making 40 grand in equity on your home. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Um, do you do you have any other retirement? No, I do not. Okay. So your entire retirement is essentially the equity that you can get out of this home? Yes, sir. Okay. And these code liens are essentially prohibiting you from being able to sell your property and from getting any equity out of the property? Yes. Um, trying to move on with your life and redeem as much as you can from the property? Yes. If the property was foreclosed right now and sold through the foreclosure process, you would essentially get zero after the mortgages were foreclosed, and then the remainder would go to the city to correct. satisfy portions of their lien, correct? Um, is the reduction of the code liens the only way you were personally able to obtain any equity from your home through, through a sale? Yes. Um, your Honor, that's, that's essentially what we're here. Um, he's, He's I falling on hard times. And uh, understood. The, the, the big question I have is still, you know, when? You never asked, when, did, when in 2009 did you fix these? Well, we, we, got the, we got the permits, and he fixed it immediately thereafter, moving the cars. The only other issues in 2009 were moving the cars around. So he got rid of the cars in the backyard and stuff like that, and then put up a fence as, as soon as he could with, to screen it. Those were the only issues. The cleaning of the driveway happened has happened continuously since then. Okay. What um, is the so village's response to this? We could um, have the code enforcement officer speak to specifically 09-529 regarding some of the items that were out of compliance as, as recently as December of 2018, which were still not in compliance. The main one being the disabled vehicle when Mr. Gray um, called for a reinspection. He still had a camper there that was disabled, had no tag. Um, I told him that he did go out that day, get a tag, and I went back out and did a reinspection the following day to find that the tag was finally on the camper. But the there was still an untagged camper forever. there for forever. Yeah. And if we could also, Special Magistrate, have uh, Supervisor Walker. Um, there was some testimony on the record that the owner did not know of the liens on the property, but the village regularly sends lien notices? Yeah, for at least the last three years, we've been sending out annual lien letters to all the property owners. And, and if you did receive those, did you understand the import of those letters? No, okay. I didn't. And, and regarding the, the, the camper, was that there in 2009? No, no. Okay. Right. That's only been there a couple years. So, so we're essentially asking, Your Honor, this is, this is a hardship. It's punitive in regards to his, him and his situation. He's trying to move on, and, and these code liens are um, overly restrictive. We're asking for a reduction between five and $10,000 total so that he can then move on with his life. Um, this is not something <clears throat> out, of, out of malice. This was out of um, just not knowing the process, thinking it was already done, Your Honor. And, and we fall on your mercy. Okay. And response back from the village. The village, we're, we're seeking our standard recommendation, which is two times the village's costs. And obviously, it's uh, up to you. It's your discretion. But that's our standard recommendation. What are the costs here? $12,854.11. So is that, is that twice? So, yes, so it would be 24000 approximately. Correct. And in case 05. 67 18-0567 the village's costs exceed the fine amount so we would oppose well, that, any reduction so it's five seven who cares it's 125 bucks and, and and just for the record with the numbers he's testified to that would it would leave him zero with the sale of the property with the value as it is 
That's why we're asking for a reduction in the five to $10,000 and to allow him to sell this to someone that can move in and, and take okay. the property. Well, you either gonna get foreclosed. Will the foreclosure wipe out the liens? Yes, it will. No, we'll, we'll get proceeds. Well, from no, you get the access, we'll but the, but when, once they foreclose on the property, the issue is that this was set for foreclosure sale and you can correct me. I don't know if you're representing him or involved in the foreclosure, but I believe this was set for sale, went to sale and was subsequently forfeited. So I believe that's why you're now selling it independently. Is that correct? So that, that I'm helping him out to, so that he can get some money out of it because if it went through foreclosure sale, like it was, then he would have gotten zero because all of the excess would have gone um, to the subsequent lien ors. <clears throat> hate these cases. These are I, so much fun. All right. Um, I'll reduce all three liens to twelve thousand eight hundred fifty-four dollars and eleven cents. They usually want twenty-eight thousand dollars, so I'm only doing one of them, and I'm only doing one of them once. They want twenty-eight thousand per normally so i'll do it at 12 8 54 11 and 60 give them i'm going to give them 90 previous. days to close you have 90 days to do it or the amount will go back so that date is four nine by four nine Um, and we'll break that up as to no reduction on 180567. That'll just be denied. Split the two between the two. There's an extra penny over there. Put it on 529. That's the bigger amount. Okay, it gives you a little bit of relief. I wish I would have seen pictures and things of the yard without the stuff. It'd make it my life a lot easier. I, I do have a picture of the yard in 2018. But it's in 2018. I'd love to see a birthday party in 2010 with people lounging in the backyard, you know, hanging out, nothing there. Does the fee officer have any knowledge of, of the facts in between that, that would help us I don't think you're going to do any good Not here. Backyard, I think it's no. just going to be worse. So. You know, take what you've got right here and, and try to run with it, and at least maybe you'll get, you know, 10 grand out of it or more, and hopefully you can move on. Otherwise, it's just going to go to the bank. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Moving now to page, top of page 7, 18-0448. Uh, that's back to us now. 18-0448, 139 Sparrow Drive, Royal Village Townhouses Condominium Association, Inc., Oh, it's an 18 case. I'd like to know the following documents and evidence. Exhibit 1, letter requesting fine mitigation. Exhibit 2, previous order assessing fine. Exhibit 3, affidavit of compliance. Exhibit 4, verification ownership. Okay. Please state your name for the record. Cheryl McGowan. A lot of mix here. <laughs> okay, and you are what with the organization? Are you the property manager or? I'm the vice president VP. on the HOA. VP, got it. All right, how much? Uh, the fine amount is $1,275. And I don't have a cost total, but it exceeds the fine amount. Okay, Ms. McGowan, why should the fine be reduced? We have tried so hard to get everything into compliance. We have spent all the money we have we're, we're broke. We only have 39 units. We just got a new roof put on. We just got a new paint job and stucco repairs. We didn't not comply because we didn't want to comply. Every job that we have done, we have to get three people to come in and give us an estimate. And I would call and call and call and get promise after promise that somebody would come out to give me an estimate to get the job done and nobody show up. Not just re continuously. In the end, we ended up paying almost over $2,000 to have seven shrubs and two trees replaced. That's a ridiculous amount of money, but we had to in order to get the stuff fixed. And now half of what we put out there, because it's not rainy season, is dying. So we just don't have the money to keep paying the fine and to try and get this up to where you all want it to be. 
and it's not for lack of trying. I hear whispering. Does anyone want to say anything out loud? <laughs> I just asked if this was the one that they had trouble finding a landscape plan. And yes. Plan. Okay. So you had trouble finding a landscape plan to even figure out what you're doing? Margaret had given us a warning telling us that the sidewalks needed to be cleaned and these shrubs and bushes, that it was going to come to a violation. And I started trying to get a permit before we ever even got violated. And then we got the violation and it still was a fight trying to get the permit because the, pay, the plans that we're all supposed to have, nobody has. She, she was a fixture in the office. Okay. <laughs> um, by what, what is, with four something is the date? Four nine, 2019. $195 by four nine nineteen. That's a whopping $5 per unit. Thank you so very, very much. We will do it. We will have it done. Thank, Thank you. you. I get to see you one more time. <laughs> okay, if you're here and you're getting what you're getting because they're saying you're a fixture there. Well, I have so. her name right, finally. <laughs> they know me by name, I promise you. I have been in their office. Okay, let's Thank bang you. through a couple more of these. Next is case 17-09431181 Grandview Circle, Joan Pinkston. All pressure cleaning and services. Correction on the agenda. I think there's a K missing. Yes, Thank you. Oh, it might be fixed on his. Yeah. K-12. Yeah. <clears throat> I would like to enter the following documents into evidence. Exhibit one is the order requesting the fine mitigation, exhibit two is the order finding delinquency and assessing fines and penalties. Okay. Hmm. Ma'am, you are? Your name? Ma'am, ma'am. Joan Pinkston. Okay. I didn't hear what she said, what she read. It was the request for the fine mitigation was my first exhibit and my second exhibit was the order finding delinquency and assessing penalties. Okay. All right, and that's one, uh, that's 17. We have two others, too? Yes, you want them all read at the same time? It's up to you, people. Let's do them separate. Okay. They'll, they'll have separate orders. And the fine amount, this is a BTR, so the, the total fine amount in your order was 425. 425. But 300 is the fine amount. That's the license fee can't be reduced on right. the fine amount. So it's $300 in fines. Okay. Is the, the business still in business? No, he hasn't worked in over, over a year and a half. And um, uh, the first time I heard about having to cancel the license or the job was when I went in and made my appointment with, with you. <laughs> uh, we didn't know anything about it. We haven't gotten to do that yet, but we're planning on canceling it. And um, did we do the second one yet? No. Okay. okay, so we've got to still got to do uh, go in and cancel that business. Well, they're, well, they're saying that is this a corporation, or is it's it just name. it's a fictitious name? Did they renew this license for? No. Um, this case has to, they, they're not in compliance. Okay, well, they're saying that you can't do this because you still have a active business license. You have to cancel it with the state and then cancel it with the city. Uh, Sunbiz? Yeah. Yeah, that's what we're working on now. We're going to try. So, so we need to pull we're this. We're just going to pull, pull this one. And then we'll go to 17-1410-1181 Grandview Circle, Joan Pinkston. Restricted trailer in public view. I guess this is probably pressure that, cleaning trailer. That are requesting fine mitigation. Exhibit two, previous order assessing fine. Exhibit three, affidavit of compliance. Exhibit four, verification ownership. Okay, what's the amount of the fine in this case? $1,575. Yeah, and I thought uh, when I talked to, to her last time that the fine stopped November 10th. I didn't know they had got, they were $600 at one point. I didn't know they went up from there. I was, she's, she's talking about the, ma'am, you're talking about the next case. I don't know, but it, I didn't know that it went into the thousands of dollars. And okay, well, we'll get to the next case then, too. That's 18-1007. Right, 1181 Grandview Circle, Joan Pinkston. 
I can the following documents and evidence. Exhibit one, letter requesting fine mitigation. Exhibit two, previous order assessing fine. Exhibit three, affidavit compliance. Exhibit four, verification ownership. Okay. What's the amount of the fine on this? $2,150. And in case 17-1410, the village's costs are 1571.19. And in 18-1007, the costs are 1525.44. All right, Ms. Pinkston, um, we're going to do the restricted trailer and public view miscellaneous items case at 17, 14, 10. Why should that be reduced? And that's been taken care of a while ago. Yeah, well, you've told me it's taken care of a while ago, but when was a while ago? And, you know. She took pictures, and uh, that was, what, a month ago? Yes. Pictures. The compliance date is um, 2 to 2018. So it, was, it complied a long time ago, but two two eighteen. Correct. Okay. And um, that was telling. Um, that was a that was Miss Foley's case prior yeah, to. Yeah, that's right. This I is kept an getting old you case. Can, can been, can, confused. Yeah. But anyway, I told her that I had just had three surgeries, and uh, we totaled my car. My son was injured in the car accident, so he hasn't been able to go back to work, and we had. It was months before we could get outside and do the yard work, but we finally got it done. But um, I have like $10,000 worth of medical bills that I can't even pay right now because I'm not working. So I don't know how we're going to pay those fines. Well, here, here's my practical question. If I reduce this at all, can you pay this? I, it depends on how much it is. I mean, because, you know... I, I hate doing something useless and, and, and it ends up, you know, you, you, you've done a reduction in front of me, you get some number and you can't even pay it off. So if yeah. we're at the point, what would you propose for these two cases? Well, I don't know, but I thought $2,000 was a lot of money for... Oh, it is a lot of money. And the yeah. 1500 bucks is a lot of money and the village says they have... Close to that in costs with four three dollars and change on one and fifteen hundred and twenty five in costs on the other, they're looking at three grand. And I don't know just, how it got up that high because the last thing I heard was it was six hundred dollars. Well, the problem is it doesn't get stopped until someone shows up and verifies that it's well, stopped. She, she had been there several times. It was six hundred dollars when it went to hearing. And the second case ran at fifty dollars per day. So that's why the second one is is pretty high. The yeah, so the second one, one is higher because it was a this, sort of this, like a repeat violation ish. Like the, yeah. Problem. Well, the second one was the trailer. No, uh, the first one was the trailer. Both of them were trailer. Miss Miss Foley did initiate initiate both of these, okay. and then I came in after the fact when it went. Well, to we hearing. moved the trailer, put it out of my other son's house, but then we had a a tree that fell down in Wilmot. And it was, it crushed the fence in the back. And so my son cut it all up and he brought the trailer back thinking he could put the, back the trailer up into the backyard to get all the tree parts out, but it wouldn't fit. So the trailer didn't get moved right away, but we were, that's what we were planning on doing. And he brought his four wheelers so we could pull the trailer out, put all the. Yeah, but even though you removed the trailer, you still had all the weeds and all the all the miscellaneous items. Remember, I kept coming back out, and you still had all the grass all over the fence, and you had all that Well, that was in the backyard. On the that side was the, of the first house time I had heard about that on that back gate. I had never heard anything about that. The very back fence was, was damaged by that tree, but that was never brought up before. So that was the first time I heard about both of those. So I got out, and it almost killed me to pull all those weeds off those, that gate and that fence in the back. <clears throat> well, any high grass and weeds, when you have a violation on high grass and weeds, all high grass and weeds have to be addressed. Well, they were on the gate. I didn't know that was a violation. I'm still back to the practical point. What can you pay that I can reduce this to? Otherwise, I'm just doing something useless. Yeah, I don't know what I can pay right now. Um, well, here's my suggestion. You are now in compliance. The fines have stopped running. In what? You are now in compliance except for the business thing you need to go yeah. do that 
The fines have stopped running, correct? Correct. Okay, they can't, is this your homesteaded property? Mm, yeah. They can't foreclose on a homesteaded property, so this is just going to sit there. You really need to get yourself together, whatever monies you want to do with this, so you can tell me what you can pay. Yeah. Otherwise, I'm just saying, if I reduce it to even $1,500, which is basically what it did to the last guy, I took both of them and just gave one. You can't, if you can't pay that, it's a useless order right. for me. Well, I and then and and then the next time it comes around, I'm gonna, they're going to say she already got a reduction and she never paid it. Yeah. Which, no next time anymore. Okay, so right. so this is your one shot, and if you don't have any money and I give you an amount that you can't pay, then you've lost your shot. Well, I haven't worked for six months, seven. So here's seven my months. suggestion, and I would just suggest that you pull this for tonight. You come back later when you have some funds that you can offer. I don't know when I'm going to have any. It doesn't funds. matter because they can't do anything to you as long as you own that house. Okay? I took all and my money out of savings. I have it's, every it's penny. What I'm telling you right now is if I say $1,500 in three months and you don't pay it, that's it. You're going to have to pay the three grand, mm -hmm. and it's not going to work for you. So why are you going to waste your one shot when you can just pull this right now and you can come back when you have $500 to $1,000 at least? You know that's real. I could shoot for five hundred, but I don't know. If well, I can uh, but you don't even have that now, and right now you're just oh. wasting your shot. Okay. Why don't you just pull this for now? Your fines have stopped. No one's going to foreclose on anything. Mm -hmm. So if you, you know, you can just sit there until you're at a position where you can offer something. Because right now, I'm doing something that's not going to help you. So how how long would I have? You do it whenever you want. You're just going to pull this right now. Withdraw the request, yes, sir. We'll pull all the requests now. She kind of needs to do it. Is that what she's wanting to do? Yeah, we need her. Do you want to do that now? Or I'll, I'll give it a number, but you're probably not going to be able to pay it. Uh, do what now? Would you like to pull these for now? Withdraw pull these. Request for would you like to request your, draw your, or withdraw your request for mitigation now and come back at a time when you have some money? In other words, I, I have some time to get the money? Exactly. And that way, this is not becoming useless. So you want to withdraw, correct? Say yes. And you'll come back another time and ask for a mitigation. This will be just wiped out. Okay. It, it won't, it's, it's like, like it, it didn't even happen. happen. Okay. And that way you can say, look, I've had all these problems. I can offer you this much money. Right now you have no money. And if I say $1,500, what's the point? It's just going to go back to $3,000. you are not going to be able to pay it. Right. And you've blown your shot. Save your shot. Okay. All right. She's withdrawn. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Next. Bottom is 7, 16 1750 Okeechobee Boulevard, Target Corporation. Oh. At least she's wearing Target colors. <laughs> kind of the red. All right, the new number 12. All right. I would like to enter the following documents into evidence. Exhibit 1, the request for fine mitigation. Exhibit 2, the order assessing fine. And Exhibit 3, um verification of ownership and exhibit four affidavit of compliance okay the, um you'll see on the original request she was supposed to be our first case for december and i filed it away in the drawer so unfortunately she was here and trying to get in and we couldn't add her to the agenda she so she's showed a up december for the case hearing. is that what you're telling me she was supposed to be a december case she was uh, our I'm first nicer request in december. That's and she showed up. <laughs> I did. That's what they're saying. I'm nicer in December. So they're saying, please give her the December. It was back in my <laughs> mistake. All right. What is the amount of the fine? $10,125. $10,125. And what's the amount of the cost? $2,593.85. And what is your name for the record? My name's Taylor Puska. And you're going to spell that last name? The P is in Paul, U-S-K-A. So I would have given you a B. <laughs> and you are? I'm the property management business partner. So I have 16 stores on this coast. Proc manager. Yep. Okay. And you're going to ask me, or you're going to tell me why we should reduce this? I will say that all of the issues have been rectified. Um, as soon as I got in contact with uh, Ms. Walker, we, 
We try to fix a lot of the easy stuff um, right off the bat, like litter and debris, carton crates, uh, sidewalk stained. Um, the roof tiles took a little bit because we had to sub that out to a vendor and it took a little bit. And then landscaping also took some time because we did have to have several visits with our landscaper um, for from Gerard um, Landscaping. So, But I will say that everything is in compliance now, I think, as of March. Okay, so normally the village likes two times their costs on these type of things. Correct. That's what we've been asking for, and that's a that's total of five thousand one hundred eighty-seven dollars and seventy cents. We'll just make it a flat five. Okay. Five thousand dollars by. By four, nine, nineteen. Okay. Um, I believe we do have the the second. Um, I'm not, I don't see it on this paper though. It's the paving case that we uh, fixed. That's still not in compliance because the, remember the light post hasn't been removed? They did do that. The beacon for the drive up, that's removed. It's done now? Yes, okay. Correct. When you in had originally striping. asked me to go out and reinspect, okay. it, it wasn't, wasn't done, done. Okay. So um, <laughs> send me a copy of when that was done and if you have photos when that was done. And then they can that self might, find on that date yeah. at least. Okay. Yes. Um, we or, did. Or, your, or the vendor sending you the requirement to get paid or the check you wrote when it was done, that kind of stuff. I can give all that, yeah. We had to, <clears throat> excuse me, my headquarters partners had to pretty much deal with it. Remember, it was the old, like, m and &M asphalt from, like, 2015. Like, it was it was way before my time, so we had to find that vendor. I think we're, are we talking about maybe a different issue now? Yeah, we we're talking about a light pole that you need moved. So, or a, that or... was the asphalt with the, um, the, we needed to pull a permit. So we went back and we did that for the ADA crosswalks that got fixed in November of this past year. That was case um, ending in 2051. Yeah, I don't have that. This request is for 16, 17, Only 16. that one? Okay. All right, well, we'll see you again then. Okay, I'll come back in yeah, December. I, I'm sorry. I don't, it's okay. The other, the other case isn't listed on this one. Okay, I have... Um, 1760, I have a bunch of stuff. All the paperwork, um, do you remember when we sat down in October? We pulled, so this is all the stuff from that, and it all actually is referring to case 2051, which is the paving one. Um, okay. like yeah, you'll work it out, you'll fix it. You'll okay. get an affidavit of compliance, and then you come back. Okay. Okay? Okay. Okay, so the other one needs to be paid by four nine five thousand. Okay. Okay. I'll email you a copy of the order. Okay. We have a stray person left. Who's our straight person? Thank you. Yep, she needs Here, raise one. your right hand. Swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you God, say yes. She says yes. What page? Uh, towards the end, one of the last fine mitigations. Page seven. Okay, Heron? Yes, case 18 115 136, Heron Parkway, Kivet Parkinson. I'd like to enter the following documents into evidence Exhibit 1, letter requesting fine mitigation. Exhibit 2, previous order assessing fine. Exhibit 3, affidavit of compliance. Exhibit 4, verification of ownership. How much? Uh, the fine amount, sir, is $825. And your name, ma'am? Kivet Parkinson. Thank you. All right, ma'am, why should the fine be reduced? I didn't hear Linda, you. Linda, shh. I didn't hear you. I said, why should the fine be reduced? Well, as a single parent, I, you know, it's the first time I am here, first time I ever got a fine, being as I'm there from 15 years now. And I wasn't really aware of how the whole procedure went, which when Margaret came out, I had a car on my driveway and a plywood on the windows, I took care of those, drove her down, asked her for some more time, I took care of those. However, the siding of the house from my neighbor's sprinkler had messed up the walls, so that grew and grew, I didn't even know. So one day I was making a delivery and I came to this village here and I asked about the fine and come to find out it was $800, so I was told I could come here to try to get it reduced, so this is why I'm here. Okay, and how much do you think you should pay? I would not love to pay $800, but whatever you tell me, we'll go for it. Was she cooperative? Once she contacted us, yes, she was. It took a while to get her to contact us, so. 
200 okay. by 4919. 200, 49. And you know where you saw me in the office? I could go it there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. All You're right. welcome. Thank you. Thank you. We'll I thought this order. was going to be a nice, easy agenda of eight pages and two full pages oh, yeah. of code mitigation. We've got a lot now, yeah. We have to fly. We're going back to page one, fine assessment hearings. 18-1575-119 Cordoba Circle, Jeffrey Michael Gant. Okay. And then watch her on camera. Her hair's down still. Okay. Like to enter into evidence uh, the order finding violation. Exhibit two, verification of ownership, and exhibit three, permit information. Boy, I could use a jacuzzi. You have a signed green card, you have service. What do you want? Uh, this has been out of compliance for 13 days, so we'd be asking for 325 a fine of 325 and continuing is granted. 18-1923-11141 Southern Boulevard, BPP Southern Palm, LLC. I to enter into evidence the previous order finding violation. Exhibit two, verification of ownership, and exhibit three pictures. Who's dinging? <laughs> All right, you have an affidavit of service, so you have service. Carabas. Those people love signs in that parking lot. I'm in there gassing up at Costco like every other day. Dollar ninety-five for regular. Yeah. Um, what do you want? This has been out for thirteen days at fifty dollars a day, so six fifty plus continuing is granted. 18-1680-10616, Fascination Lane, Anthony Kaminsky. I'd like to enter the following documents into evidence. Exhibit 1, previous order, finding violation. Exhibit 2, verification ownership. Exhibit 3, pictures. Sign green card equals service. Okay, we, he parks there a lot. I mean, I can see the bare spot. The parking on the front oh. lawn actually came into compliance, 23-18B. It complied wow, he's on a nicer truck than mine, okay. So your order will say that that section will continue to comply, but for the other section, all right. So out. parking on the lawn is—is is that a finding of fact then? No, it's well. it, essentially. But your order doesn't say that. It says it'll continue to comply because this is a fine assessment order. So continue to comply. Right, and then the other um, violation remains. So it's been out for 13 days, 325, and continuing. 325 plus continuing is granted. Thank you. You buy sod now for 195 bucks a pallet. 18-1756-1280 Chorus Way, Shana Thane. I'd like to enter the following documents into evidence. Exhibit 1, previous order, finding violation. Exhibit 2, verification, ownership. Exhibit 3, pictures. She signs for everything. Okay. This has been out for 13 days, so we'd be asking for $325 and continuing. 325 plus continuing is granted. Thank 18 you. 109 Bob White Road, IH6 Property, Florida LP. Act 10 are the following documents into evidence. Exhibit 1, previous order, finding violation. Exhibit 2, verification, ownership. Exhibit 3, pictures. All right, was this the guy? The IH2 guy? Yeah. He told us he was leaving. Yeah. Um, now Mary's are supposed to take and, over. And no one has taken over, or they if they've taken over, they haven't taken they, over? They've had a merger and everything else. So. Oh. So they merged his job out, huh? So they'll be back. All right, so you have a signed green card. You have service. What do you want? Again, out of compliance for 13 days, 325 to continue. Granted. Thank you. 18-1924-103 Sunflower Circle, IH5 Property, Florida. 910 are the following documents and evidence. Exhibit 1, previous order, finding violation. Exhibit 2, verification, ownership. Exhibit 3, pictures. People these days really need to take cursive writing classes. <laughs> I at least try to have a couple letters that look like they belong in my name. Okay, what do we have here? Side driveway, weeds in the back. Yeah, someone's weed eater isn't working. What do you want? You have and a out for 13 card. days, $325. 325 plus continuing is granted. Thank you. 18 1441 is being pulled. Moving Ooh. to repeat violations 18 2051 244 La Mancha Avenue, Frank C. Bancy's. I like prohibited vehicles, it's always fun. Like to enter into oh, I need to read the case. <laughs> the code section is 2318B1, repeat violation for prohibited vehicle. I observe this violation on 12-26-18, mailed the notice of violation, notice for hearing certified, and posted it on the property, then I also got service on it. You don't let six-wheeled semi-tractor trailer sit in the village? Unfortunately, no. 
You know, this guy backs in so well, though. He's like a good driver. Like to enter into evidence, Exhibit 1, notice of violation, notice of hearing and affidavit of service, Exhibit 2, order previous order finding violation, Exhibit 3, verification of ownership, and Exhibit 4, pictures. All right, how many days? Or we it was out for three days at $100 a day, so a $300 fine and not 300, continuing. no continuing is granted. Moving now to the violation hearings, top of page 3, 18-1792, 228 Parkwood Drive, Nezimedine Khan. Code section is 144A, disabled unregistered vehicles. I observed this violation on 10, 12, 18, mail the notice of violation, notice of hearing certified, and post them on the property. I'd like to enter into evidence, exhibit one, notice of violation, notice of hearing and affidavit of service, exhibit two, verification of ownership, exhibit three, picture, and exhibit four, affidavit of compliance. Is this a finding of fact? Yes, sir. Um, they are also, oh, it's a rescue thing. I thought it was a H.L. Johnson thing. Finding of fact is granted. 18-1864, 132 Cortez Avenue, James W. and Jennifer Basford. Code section is 622-105.5. Permit for fence is expired. I observed this violation on 10-24-18. Mail the notice of violation and notice of hearing certified and post them on the property. I right enter into evidence, exhibit one, notice of violation, notice of hearing and affidavit of service, exhibit two, verification of ownership, and exhibit three, permit information. Have they ever put the fence up or do we know? Yes. Oh, at least they did and got a permit too. All right, what do you want with this one? Compliance, Compliance by 228, 313, or 25? Yes, sir. What a good guess. Granted. 18 1881, 207 Salzado Street, Paul L. and Denise A. Calise. Code section is 6190H. Shutter is closed. I observed this violation on 10 25 18. Mailed the notice of violation, notice of hearing certified, and got the green card back. I'd like to enter into evidence, Exhibit 1, Notice of Violation, Notice of Hearing, Exhibit 2, Verification of Ownership, and Exhibit 3, Picture. All right. Paul's a Facebook friend of mine. His son came in here with a airplane. Yep. Trainer. It's a large. So, okay. Again, compliance by 228, 313, 25 is granted. 18-1918, 349 Las Palmas Street, Carlos L. and Josie R. Molahan. Code section is 2318B2, restricted trailer not screened from view. I observed this violation on 11218, mailed the notice of violation, notice of hearing certified, and got the green card back signed but not dated. I'd like to enter into evidence, exhibit one, notice of violation, notice of hearing. Exhibit two, <clears throat> verification of ownership, and exhibit three, picture. I'm like, the boat's okay. No, it's the lawn trailer in the front of the boat correct Got it. okay there you go oh you missed it get back okay, one more I, there we are i need to uh, address that he has uh, spoken to me and the village manager in regards to coming into compliance with this violation he wasn't able to come to the hearing tonight okay so are you gonna give him some more time or are you just gonna let him go to the 28th what would you like 28th. to do 228 compliance by 228 or the 313 fine All right. or 25 dollar day fine so he's going to comply we hope yes hopefully it's uh okay granted thank you 18-1919 353 las palmas street william bass and tracy stevens code section is 2657 canopy without a permit i observed this violation on 11 218 mail the notice of violation notice of hearing certified and gave the property owner a copy in the office. I'd like to enter in evidence, exhibit one, notice of violation, notice of hearing and affidavit of service, exhibit two, verification of ownership, exhibit three, picture, and exhibit four, affidavit of compliance. Finding of fact is granted. Thank you. 18-1969-11752 Balsam Drive, Raul A. Ramirez and Marletis A. Herrera. Code section is 6190A, drive and sidewalk are stained. I observed this violation on 11 16 18. Mailed the notice of violation, notice of hearing certified, and got the green card back signed but not dated. I'd like to enter into evidence, exhibit one, notice of violation, notice of hearing, exhibit two, verification of ownership, and exhibit three pictures. Yeah, if you call that signed, more like scratched or scrawled. Do you have a signed green card? What would you want with this one? Compliance by 228 or the 313 fine hearing or $25 a day fine. 228, 313, 25 granted. Thank you. 18 1980 869 Camellia Drive, Nolesis C. Silverio. 
The code section is 2318B2, restricted trailer is parked on the driveway. I observed this violation on 112618, mailed the notice of violation, notice of hearing certified, and got the green card back signed but not dated. I'd like to enter into evidence, Exhibit 1, notice of violation, notice of hearing, Exhibit 2, verification of ownership, and Exhibit 3, picture. Okay. Um, is the trailer too big? Is that the problem? No. Um, the covered trailers do not have to be screened, but they do have to be parked on the side of the house only. Okay, so it's the location, not the yes. size. Got it. All right, well, hopefully they'll figure that out. 228, 313, 25? Yes, sir. Granted. 18-1981, 868 Lilac Drive, Corliss, J. Larson. Code section is 2318B3 and 14-2, parking on the lawn and clothes hanging on the fence. I observed this violation on 11-26-18, mailed a notice of violation, notice of hearing certified, and got the green card back signed but not dated. I can enter the evidence, Exhibit 1, notice of violation, notice of hearing, Exhibit 2, verification of ownership, and Exhibit 3, picture. See, when I was growing up in South Miami, we actually had a clothesline in our yard. Mm -hmm. Our neighbors had clotheslines, and everyone hung their clothes out, and you got to see what everyone had in their laundry baskets. <laughs> Nowadays, not so much. You have a signed green card, what do you want? Uh, on this one, compliance by January 31st, or the 213 fine hearing, or $25 a day fine? Well, now, now you're confusing me. 131, 213, 25. So we're having a 213 and a 313. Yes. That's weird. Granted. Thank you. 18-1993-839 Hibiscus Drive, Wilmington Savings Fund Society, FSB Trust. Code sections are 622-108.4, 6190A, 6191, and 2657. Work being done without a permit, structure in disrepair and stained, and shed without a permit. I observed this violation on 11-28-18, mailed a notice of violation, notice of hearing certified, and got the green card back. I'd like to enter into evidence, Exhibit 1, Notice of Violation, Notice of Hearing, Exhibit 2, Verification of Ownership, and Exhibit 3, Pictures. Okay, well, the first thing I notice is they have house numbers, and they are big enough, so that's good. Um, some people don't need a pergola, it's falling apart. You have a signed green card, what would you like? Uh, we'd be asking for compliance by 131 or the 213 fine hearing or $25 a day fine. Granted. 18-2021, 124 Saratoga Boulevard West, Robbie and Bridget Del Rio. Code section is 14-2, debris on the property. I observed this violation on 12-10-18, mailed the notice of violation, notice of hearing, certified, and got the green card back signed. I'd like to enter into evidence, Exhibit 1, notice of violation, notice of hearing, Exhibit 2, verification of ownership, and Exhibit 3, picture. So this is signed, it's double stamped by the post office, so you can see the date. I don't know why. December 13th and let's see, oriented strand board, pallets, what looks to be a container for something, maybe. Eh, someone's doing some work. I'm surprised the HOA isn't all over this too. What do you want? Compliance by 131 or the 213 fine hearing or $25 a day fine. Granted. 18-1870, 1400 Chorus Way, Oscar E. Chavez. Code section 0619A13 M5 roof structure sidewalk are stained. I observed this violation on 102418, mailed out a notice violation notice of hearing on 102518, and received it on 102118. I'd like to enter those following documents into evidence. Exhibit one, notice of violation, notice of hearing. Exhibit two, verification ownership. Exhibit three, pictures. Well, Margaret's like the pro at getting things signed, but boy. No one has a signature anymore. It's just horrible. It's a scribble. This is a scribble dribble thing. Yep. All right. Um, granted. What do you want? Just compliance by two twenty eight or three thirteen fine assessment hearing or twenty five dollar a day fine. That's granted too. Thank no. you. Thank you. Eighteen dash one eight seven three eleven oh four Grandview Circle Marcos A Gamera. Code section zero six one ninety A one three five and. 14-2. 14-2. Miscellaneous. I can't read my own writing either. Uh, miscellaneous items. Structure paint is weathered and faded. Driveway paint is weathered. Sidewalk is stained. I observed this violation on 10-24-18. Not on those. The violation notice of hearing on 10-25-18 and posted it to the property. I'd like to enter those following documents into evidence. 
Exhibit one, notice of violation, notice of hearing, affidavit of service. Exhibit two, verification of ownership. Exhibit three, pictures. All right, so he's got some patchwork to do after he takes down his Christmas lights. You have a service via posting. What would you like? Compliance by 228 or the 313 fine hearing or $25 a day fine. And that seems to be enough time to get his Christmas lights down. Granted. Thank you. Page five. Yes, sir. 18-1908-1244 Grandview Circle, Wilson J. Surreal. Code section is 14-4, disable unused vehicle. I observe this violation on 1031-18. Send out notice of violation, notice of hearing on 11-118. They signed for it 11 like to enter the following documents and evidence. Exhibit one, notice of violation, notice of hearing. Exhibit two, verification of ownership. Exhibit three, pictures. Exhibit four, affidavit of compliance. I'm gonna give someone a good penmanship award in this, but it's not gonna to be today. <laughs> um, you have a signed green card. We have uh, 2004 to 2008 Ford F-150 crew cap. And what else, a trailer? And an affidavit of compliance. Yes. Finding a fact. Yes, sir. Finding a fact is granted. Thank you. 18-1933-197 Sandpiper Avenue, Albert M. Crowley II. Code section 2318 and 124C, parking on the front lawn, garbage can slash recycle bin in public view. Observe this violation on 11-618, sign on notice of violation, notice of hearing on 11-618 and posted it to the property. I'd like to enter those following documents into evidence. Exhibit one, notice of violation, notice of hearing, affidavit of service. Exhibit two, verification of ownership. Exhibit three, pictures. All right, so I got the cone. And the recycling. And the bin. recycling containers over there. And where do you get a green cone anyway? Pardon? I said, where do you get a green cone? They're usually orange. I don't know, but where's the parking on the lawn part? Is that just the, the red Toyota? Car. Okay, so they don't really have a swale? No. So you can't park on the lawn? Not on the lawn. And they were parking up further up into the yard, so. Oh, well, at least they're getting closer. They did get closer. All right, what would you like on this one? On this one, uh, code section 23-18, which is parking on the front line, on is a finding of fact. Okay. And for 124C, we'd ask for compliance by 228 or the 313 fine hearing or $25 a day fine. Oh, that's an easy one to fix. Granted. Thank you. Yes, remove, your, remove your recycling container to the back. 18-1936, Confidential Record, Samuel L. Thompson. Code section 06190A1, 2, and 3, roof structure and driveway are stained. Paint is weathered and chipping from the fascia and drip edge. I observe this violation on 11-818, sent out notice of violation, notice of hearing on 11-818, and posted it to the property as well. I'd like to enter those following documents into evidence. Exhibit 1, notice of violation, notice of hearing. Affidavit of service, exhibit two, verification ownership, exhibit three pictures. All right, someone lives there, they have a truck. Yes, they live there. Okay. <clears throat> All right, you have service via posting. What would you like? Compliance by 228 or the 313 fine here in your $25. Granted. Fine. Thank you. 18 1051 Yeoman Lane, Robert Ojeda. Code section 2657, canopy without a permit. I observed this violation on 11-618. Send out notice of violation, notice of hearing on 11, I'm sorry, 11-1618. It sent that out on 11-1618. Uh, they signed for it on 11-21-18. Like to enter those following documents into evidence. Exhibit one, notice of violation, notice of hearing. Exhibit two, verification of ownership. Exhibit three, pictures. Exhibit four, affidavit compliance. That looks nice. I like the flags flying in the wind. Yes. Okay, it's very artistic. What would you like on this one? Is finding it a finding of fact yes, granted? 18-1965-10317, Pippin Lane, Nurisol D. Garcia, and George Gaeta. Code section 942 and 14-4, fence needs repaired, disabled vehicle. Observe this violation on 11-16-18, sent out notice of violation, notice of hearing on 11-16-18, and they signed for it on 11-20-18. I'd like to enter those following documents into evidence. Exhibit one, notice of violation, notice of hearing. Exhibit two, verification of ownership. Exhibit three, pictures. Exhibit four, affidavit of compliance. Well, I actually see two letters I can read, an N and a G. All right. Finding a fact. Finding a fact is granted. You have service via someone who actually knows a letter. Thank you. 18-1984-206 Sandpaper Avenue, Alicia Flores. Code section 2318, parking on the front lawn. I observed this violation on 112618. Send out notice of violation, notice of hearing on 112618, and posted it to the property as well. 
I'd like to enter those following documents into evidence. Exhibit 1, notice of violation, notice of hearing, affidavit of service. Exhibit 2, verification of ownership. Exhibit 3, pictures. My God, they're just driving over all kinds of stuff to park there, huh? It's a mess. Yeah. It's a real mess? Yeah. Oh, and then they have enough room in their yard to put a grill out for their front door, but can't put the cars in the driveway. Okay. You have service to your posting. We'd be asking for compliance by 228 or the 313 fine hearing or $25 a day fine. Granted. Thank you. 18 1991 1385 Elm Bank Way, Oton Oliveira. Section 1557 is 06190 A1, 3, and 5. High grass and weeds, structure, driveway, sidewalk are stained. Not maintaining grass behind fence. I observe this violation on 11 Send out notice of violation, notice of hearing on 11 They signed for it on 11 I'd like to enter those following documents into evidence. Exhibit 1, notice of violation, notice of hearing. Exhibit 2, verification of ownership. Exhibit 3, pictures. You know, we saw the picture of the last one up there. They didn't even have a sidewalk they were going to go cross to park their two or three cars in a row. That'd be legal. All right, this one. This one needs to borrow my John Deere. <laughs> yeah. Did you um, save it to be posted on those? Yep, we'll do that now. She didn't read into the record, but just to correct on your agenda, subpart C all the way at the end of 06190. Which is what? Uh, the description is not on there. Okay, and then I just scratch out the C. Correct. Got it. And right. then 06190A1, yes. which is the structure stained, is a finding of fact. Okay, hold on. So they fixed the hardest thing. Yep, they painted the house. It's beautiful. The house. So 1557 and the remaining three and five. High grass and weeds and. Right, driveway and sidewalk still being stained. Wow. They do the hard thing. We'd be asking for compliance by 131 or 213 hearing or a $50 a day fine. Why? I'm just uh, saying they did the hard thing. Because well, of the high grass and weeds could be a health safety issue if they don't right, get okay. that mode. I see. So you came up with a good good answer. One thirty one two thirteen fifty. One thirty one two thirteen fifty. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. See, you just have to come up with a reason. I like reasons. Thank you. Considering I just uh, had to buy thirty-six dollars worth of rat poison from Red Barn to kill one rat. If anyone needs a uh, the extra yeah, seven, okay. yeah, we got to pull two more. <coughs> Top of six eighteen dash two zero three one is being pulled. Okay. And then the abate health safety welfare on page eight eighteen dash two zero five two is being pulled. And you said we had to flash through here. It's not even seven thirty, people. We're doing yeah, great. It's not going to be seven thirty. Well, good. It's seven twenty nine nine. We're adjourned. Thank you.